Hi, it's Nikki here from Happy Hormones for Life. And today I've got the fabulous Marika Messager here with me. She's the founder of ConsciousLeadership.org, a conscious leader and change architect. Unlocking the genius in most successful business leaders internationally, elevating individuals, businesses, and the global community into a new paradigm of conscious leadership and positive impact. Now, before I tell them a bit more about you, Marika, I want to just let you introduce your story and how you've come to, to talk about conscious leadership, of course, what that is, but also, you know, really how you got to this stage, because this isn't what you used to do, is it? No, it's not. <laughs> okay, hi, everyone. So, um, yeah, how did I get there? Um, I started my career in the financial industry on the trading floor, and I was an equity analyst, a sell-side analyst, and I ended up uh, managing 40 people across Europe as head of equities for Europe for a French bank. Um, and, you know, there was great success, there was um, a lot of money, and uh, it was fulfilling for a time. And at some point in my career, I realized that the next rung on the ladder didn't, help, didn't, didn't hold any appeal for me. And I started to question myself about, you know, what, what is really holding meaning for me? What is it that I really want to do? And why really am I losing drive? Am I losing passion? What's happening to me? Um, and I, since I'm 28, I started working on myself. I had family issues um, that ended up, uh, you know, being a problem for me to function normally. Uh, so as a Parisian French woman living in Paris at the time, I went to see a therapist and I started to work on myself. Um, and I got interested into very different uh, disciplines. So I also started doing yoga, started doing meditation and really exploring pathways of self-development, self-awareness and emotional healing, really. And I found this fascinating, you know, I was passionate about self-development, but more than that, I really could see that the work I was doing on myself was really helping me become a better leader, a better human, a better manager, and really helping me be more successful in my career. You know, manage people better, understand people better, communicate better with people, but also, you know, be more present, be more centered. Um, I'll give you an example, for instance, when you work on a trading floor and your computer crashes down, it's, it's a big stress, right? Because you're kind of trading, working on orders and stuff. So most people kind of ring the, the tech department and kind of shout and, you know, with all the work I was doing on myself, I was like, oh my God, I, I'm not shouting anymore. I'm able to pick up the phone and be very composed and say, I have a problem with my, with my computer. Will you please come over? Um, so I was starting to connect the dots between, you know, this, this work I was doing on myself and the benefits I was experimenting in my career. And I got more and more interested in that. And I just wanted to explore. Um, but it was hard because I was in a you know, great job, um, you know, making a lot of money and in a very kind of um, you know, inspiring environment in a way. Um, and what really made the shift for me was um, a training I did in South America where I was uh, you know, working with shamans and I was being initiated in um, a lineage of shamanic healers from Mexico. It was a month long and it was very full on. We were starting at like 6.30 a.m. until 11 p.m. Uh, it was, you know, very interesting. And one day we had to do an exercise, which was basically breaking wooden boards with our hands. And, you know, all the exercises we were doing, I always had kind of an intuition within me, like this one, I'm going to be able to do it. This one, I'm going to be able to do it. And I dare to say I was a bit arrogant in my approach. I was like, yeah, I've done so many things. And, you know, I'm kind of Wonder Woman in a way. And, uh, and when we had to do this exercise, I was like, oh, that's going to be tough. Uh, I really kind of knew that I was not going to be able to do it. And so we were all kind of doing this. And, you know, the other people who were in the course were breaking the board. And I was like, wow. And then comes my turn and I try and the you know, the board just doesn't break. And I'm like, ouch, it hurts. Um, and so, you know, the teacher tells me, you know, go, go back and sit on the bench. And then she calls me again and I try again and it doesn't work. And she sends me back to the bench and then my whole body starts to shake and I start to cry. And I'm not somebody who cries with, you know, with all the trainings I've done, um, I, I'm not a crier. And I was like, what is going on with me, you know? And, and then the teacher calls me again. 
And she kind of, you know, bumps me. She's like, okay, why are you doing this? Uh, you know, give, give, give me your board, give me all, all your power. And I was like, no. And anyway, I, I try again and I break the board. And she takes me in her arms and she said, you broke a big pattern, that's fantastic. And there was a colleague in the group with me, you know, which was older than me. And I had a lot of respect for her. And she came to me at this moment in time and she said, Marika, I will follow you anywhere and everywhere. And this really shocked me because I was like, oh my God, that's, that's the moment I break down that she comes to me and she said, basically, you're a leader and I will follow you. So it got me into a deep stage of reflection of what leadership really meant. Because, you know, having worked in finance, I thought that leadership was about being strong and, you know, never breaking down. I mean, you have to know that on the trading floor as a woman, if you cry, you're committing suicide, really, right? Um, so I was like, maybe there is something more to leadership than strength. And maybe there is something to say about vulnerability and who you are, basically, when things become difficult. Um, and, and this is what inspires people. And this is what creates trust for people to actually, um, you know, allow you to lead them. And, you know, from this day, I was like, okay, we need to change the leadership paradigm. We need to move away from competition, domination, strength, uh, which are very much patriarchal values and the old way of leading. And we need to move towards something different, which at, at that time for me was around vulnerability, compassion, collaboration, co-creation. Um, and I didn't really have a name for it. And as I kind of explored deeper, I was like, actually, it's all about consciousness because the more conscious you are, the more aligned you are with yourself, the more you are able to accept who you are and, and show up authentically. And this is really conscious leadership. Um, so this was the shift and this was, you know, the awakening of, of basically my vision, my mission to, you know, support people get into this new paradigm of conscious leadership, where ultimately, you know, business is a force for good, but also good is a force for business. Amazing. Yeah. And you, when you say leadership, you're not just talking about business leaders, are you? Because we have to be leaders in lots of different ways, us women, don't we? Yeah. So, you know, you're not just helping uh, like corporate leaders. I know that's a big part of your work, but you're also talking about adopting this um uh this uh what do you call it um, philosophy <laughs> yeah. teaching to to normal life as well yeah to Def definitely for me everyone is a leader you don't need a title to be a leader right we all have leadership roles to play in our lives as a, as a mother as a woman you know as a as a business owner but you know you don't have to have a job to be a leader right and leadership starts with self-leadership so it's how do i lead myself how do i lead my life and then how do I create success in all dimensions of my life? So it's not only for, you know, corporate people or, you know, even business owners, it's really for everyone to do this work of actually leading yourself and leading your life. Mm. And why is it ever so more important now than it ever used to be? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, the world has changed, right? I mean, not only with the pandemic, but, you know, for the last 10 years, the world has really transformed into what, what is called VUCA, which is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, which means that we have to educate ourselves and learn some tools to function properly in this world where we are always distracted, where we are always, you know, um, doing stuff, right? Uh, there is a lot of doing. There is always, our minds are always on. Um, and it, it, it didn't used to be the case, right? And, you know, also the jobs that we do are requiring much more mental activity and less physical activity, right? So we need tools to actually understand how our minds do function and, you know, be able to um, observe our thoughts and choose our thoughts and also, you know, work with our emotions, right? Um, the world we live in is, is, you know, creating more stress, more anxiety, um, and, and we don't learn those tools at schools, even at university, right? How do I work with my emotions? How do I know how to come back to a place of neutrality, of centeredness when I am triggered, when I am stressed? Um, and, you know, there is also a notion of time. Everything is faster these days, right? Um, I, I have loads of clients telling me, like, there is no time. Like, the notion of time has disappeared, right? So we live in these fast-paced environments all the time where, you know, we have to 
change the the way we behave in order to actually function in those places perform in this world uh, and keep our sanity really <laughs> yeah and so, so what you teach how i know it um absolutely impacts your performance your your um, success in the world and what you're trying to do and obviously reaching your potential and all of that stuff how does it affect your health because actually you know all that the, the before and after is quite a different thing isn't it so what yeah. happens what happens to people's health when they work with you yeah so loads of things um first the way we work is that it's with the understanding that we have four bodies so we have the physical, the mental, the emotional, and the spiritual bodies. And we need to work on all of these bodies in order to level up our consciousness. And they're all unmeshed, right, to start with. So I've never seen um, anyone leveling up their consciousness without a change in their physical body, right? Bringing more health, getting rid of addictions, um, and really connecting with our physical bodies as well, because our physical bodies are where we also feel our emotions. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one thing. And the other thing is that any physical imbalance, any disease is a dis-ease, right? So I am not at ease with myself. Um, so any emotional trauma, any emotional baggage, any inability to basically process our emotions is going to create some stuckness, some emotional stuckness, uh, potentially some... Um, um, yeah, I mean, emotional pain that if it's not addressed, if it's not released, it's going to translate into a physical imbalance and eventually a disease, right? So the more we are able to work with our thought process and our emotions, the more we are creating uh, a healthy physical body for ourselves, right? And everything is interconnected. Um, you know, I, I did some training um for people who have cancer and how to help them, um, you know, heal and with like a spiritual angle to it. And what, what has been observed a lot is that uh, you can have cancer and heal from cancer, but if you don't really address the root cause, the emotional root cause of why you had cancer, it might come back, right? Yeah. So the emotional aspect of every disease needs to be addressed. Mm. And this is such a, a very um, misunderstood or lack of understanding of this whole area of how your emotions and your brain and your mental well-being affect your physical health, isn't it? There's, there's not much understanding of it out there. For sure. I mean, for a lot of people, they are disconnected, right? It's like, this is my physical body. And, you know, it's, there is a mind, there is a heart, but they, they are not connected, right? Um, and the more you do this work of consciousness, of self-leadership, the more you understand the interconnection of everything. Um, and, and the more you not only want to respect your physical body, because actually your physical body is, is a vessel, right? It's, 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 the, it's where your soul is. So the more you are taking care of yourself on a mental and emotional level, the more you also realize that you need to take care of your physical body. Uh, and it's vice versa, right? The more you heal your mental and emotional world, the more it has beneficials, benefits on your physical body as well. So it's really the understanding that everything is interconnected mm -hmm. and that we can't um, harm one body without harming the other, or we can't heal one without healing the other. That is fascinating. And it's really something that is going to be more and more developed as we go through the, 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 the future and, and how we look at health in general. I think that's really fascinating. When's the best time to, to really look at this as, as something that we need to be doing? Well, I like to say the best time to plant a tree was a hundred years ago and the <laughs> next best time is today. <laughs> so the, the time to start is really now. I mean, you don't need to be, um, to have a trigger to start doing this work. Um, obviously when you are suffering and where you are in chaos and where you're lacking clarity, uh, there are triggers for you to do something about it, right? So it's this kind of push to say, okay, I need to work on myself. Uh, but more and more, I see people coming to us and be like, okay, I want to understand all of this. I want to honor my fullest potential. I want to understand the tools that are going to help me function better, perform better, be a better human being, and, and ultimately be happier, joy more joyful, and more fulfilled. So, and live longer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So what is your methodology? How, do, how does this work? 
So um, we have, uh, I mean, I have created a whole pathway, a whole structure for people to become conscious, right? So from being an unconscious person to being a conscious person. Um, and we have, the, our main program is the Academy for Conscious Leader, which is a three-year program, uh, which might sound daunting. Three years. It's a three-year program. Uh, we start with a 12-month commitment and the first year. But, you know, the first year is all about, it's called brilliance, and it's all about reclaiming your brilliance. So what does it mean? Um, it means uh, two things. In the first year, we're going to work on your emotional intelligence and your self-awareness, right? Your understanding of yourself. So what is the, the understanding of the self? It's understanding the program that we have received throughout our lives. So from my childhood, from my culture, my religion, the country I was born in, we have been programmed and we have just received that program unconsciously. And therefore we are behaving in certain ways, which we call patterns, that if we don't have the awareness of them, we are just functioning on autopilot. We are robots. And we don't really understand most of the time why we keep repeating the same patterns over and over again. And we keep having the same results that we don't want to have. Um, so that's, that's the start of the work, right? It's like this self-awareness of my patterns, of the baggage that I have, and working on your emotional intelligence. So what is working on your emotional intelligence? It starts with the consciousness that we all have an emotional baggage. You know, we call it emotional trauma, but it's a strong world, right? Uh, but we all have hurts, we all have, uh, you know, memories of breakup, of failures, of mistakes that have left some emotional wounds within ourselves, and we need to release them in order to actually uh, be able to create emotional neutrality within ourselves. Yeah. So that's the start of the work, right? Um, so it's really about uh, claiming our true self, claiming our authenticity, and understanding who we really are if we are not the program that we have received. So it's a lot of clearing, of releasing, and of basically awakening to our truth. Um, then we start to activate that truth into the world, that authentic self into the world. So, you know, this has a phase of, you know, putting boundaries in place, understanding those places where we leak power when we say yes too often or we don't know how to say no. Um, so, you know, that's the continuation of the work. Um, and then we also work on the spiritual intelligence. What is spiritual intelligence? Is the soul identity, right? Um, if I am not the program I have received, who am I? And I am my soul identity. So here we start to tap into, uh, you know, what we're here for. What is my purpose? What is my mission? What is my vision? And also we start to connect more and more with our int intuitive capacities. So we start to come from, um, to be able to function from a place of intuition and from heart led choices, which again, talking about the world we live in is so efficient because if we make choices only with our mental body, you know, it takes forever. We loop into our minds, you know, we try to assess all the time and what if this and what is that? And then what's the risk and what's the reward? But if we actually listen to our intuition and are connected with our intuition and to our hearts, we are able to make decisions much faster and we know that they are the right decisions. So that's creating performance, efficiency, but that's also creating peace, calmness. Um, less that's mistakes. A, exactly, less mistakes, right? Um, that's another element. And then ultimately we work on system intelligence. And what is system intelligence? It's... Um, understanding the role that we play within the system and how we can be an actor of change within the system because ultimately we all long to contribute we all long to do good and this is what is true fulfillment um you know i talk a lot about success and what is our definition of success um and again you know for me success is both inner peace and for, you know contribution right uh, that creates financial success but from a place of you know fulfillment and and peace um so so we work on then system intelligence and then we have a lot of people you know kind of understanding that um within their role whatever that role is again you know it can be in the corporate world it can be as a mother it can be uh, you know with your own business what is it that I can do so that actually I start to have a positive impact on myself, on my colleagues, on my teams, on my family, on my community? 
Um, so that's the other the other part of the program. Amazing, amazing. And can you give us some kind of examples? Do you have any like uh, before and afters that you could share? Yes, I've got plenty. Um, so um, give me a hint. Which what what, uh, what transformation would you like to hear about? Like uh, more of a. I'd like to hear about someone like who's um, a majorly stressed out superwoman career woman um that's on her way to burning out and maybe you know the change that she may have seen in in working with you that that kind of scenario yeah okay um yeah so i have a client in mind and um she uh she came to me after uh giving birth to her second child and uh she had lost a lot of confidence uh and she's like you know how do i go back to a job and to a career and she works in the art world and um you know she was like i want to create my next step uh i know that i'm not really happy where i am but i've lost my confidence completely and i don't know if i'm going to be able to actually go back to that job that is full on with two small children uh, i'm already exhausted uh, you know i've just finished my, my maternity leave and uh, i don't know how i'm going to do this so we worked first together on building her confidence back uh, and on starting to um, be clear on what she was really wanting to do and the boundaries that she needed to have in place to create some form of balance between her life and her career, right? Um, and so she actually landed a great job in a new art gallery and she got promoted. So that was, you know, the first step of uh, working together. Um, but then this new job was even more uh, demanding and even more overwhelming, right? Uh, and so we continued to work together on, okay, how do I, um, how am I able to own the fact that I am a mother, I have two children, I am doing a, a great job at what I do, but I need to have my time. I can't be as efficient or I can't be as available as a 28 year old or like a 45 year old man who, you know, doesn't have a family or have a family, but, you know, has the time to do the work. Right. Um, so there was a lot of um, deprogramming and reprogramming of her unconscious of, you know, um, what is being success successful at work means. Right. Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean, uh, you know, working 12 hours a day or being at the office until 9 p.m. like some other colleagues would do. Right. So there was a lot of changing those limiting beliefs that we have to be performant in in a specific way. Right. Um, and then there was another aspect which was like understanding that if you don't take care of yourself, you are not going to be delivering good work. And I've seen this over and over and over again. And, you know, even with myself, um, we tend to think that when we have more things to do, we have to put more work in. And what we what what basically we give up on is self-care. Mm -hmm. So, you know, those the exercises or, you know, the massage or the lack of nice things that we do for ourselves when we have to work more, we tend to kind of, you know, just push them away. Sleep. And this is exactly sleep, right? This is never, never, never a sign or, uh, you know, a, a guarantee of performance. It's, it's really the opposite. And so this is another thing that we teach, right? Actually, when things become more stressful or you have more work or more deadlines, you have to level up your self-care. So that's, you know, also something we worked on. And, you know, now she's kind of in this place where she has balance. Uh, she is successful. She's seen. She's recognized. And she's starting to uh, understand that there is more to it. It's like, how can I be significant? Uh, how can I be a role model for my daughters? Um, how can I show, you know, what it means to be a woman these days that is working, that has a family um, and kind of, you know, uh, role modeling a new way to work and to live a new way of leadership. And, and what, is that, what is it that women have to show the world when it comes to leadership? Mm. So, so that's kind of a, a journey of of, um, of conscious leadership. Amazing, amazing, and I think uh, every woman right now could could be really thinking about doing this and getting more conscious about themselves, about their their purpose and and their balance in the world. And um, it sounds amazing the work you do, Marika. How can people find out more about it? Where do you think? Where do you suggest they start? 
Yeah, good question. Just before I go into that, I want to ask something and the difference between men and women, because that's that's so obvious, you know, with all the clients we work with, we work with men and women. What I see is that um, men ask for help when they are in crisis mode or chaos mode. And, uh, you know, they really appreciate the work and they, they understand and they implement. But once they've kind of uh, sorted out the problem they were in, they stop. Right. Um, women are very different. Women are keen to start doing the work at any time. They are um, curious about educating themselves, about honoring their potential, about leveling up. And they stay with us for, you know, a very long period of time because they really understand that, you know, this work kind of becomes a practice, something that we do all the time, like going to the hairdresser or going to see, you know, your, your doctor or, or your checking your hormones, right? <laughs> so, so that's one thing. Uh, where can you find uh, more about us? Um, well, we have a website, consciousleadership.org, um, where you can find uh, free resources there. One of them is the Refocus and Plan for Success Masterclass, which is an hour long and is completely free and you can do it at, in your own time. Well, you will get some understanding of the, of the different levels of leadership. You will also get some amazing tools on how to level up your emotional agility, uh, some worksheets. Um, so I really recommend doing that. Uh, we have uh, our CL Digest, which is you know, our monthly newsletter that is also available. And we have some free meditations. Um, so I've trained in hypnotherapy, in mindfulness, in yoga. So a lot of the things that we help our clients with is presence. And, you know, I ha we have a huge library of, of guided meditations. And, you know, we have uh, three meditations that are completely free uh, on the website. So you can also find them here. Oh, and of course, it. all of our programs there. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much. I'll put the links underneath uh, for people to just go and have a look at that. I strongly recommend you do the masterclass and check out the meditations too, because all of that is going to help your hormones and your health. Thank you so much, Marika. It's been a pleasure as always to talk to you. And I'll see Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. It's been a pleasure too.